All right, here we go. Uh, I'm glad that we got a good conversation going on the initial video I made yesterday covering my thoughts on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion. And later that day, well, actually, maybe an hour or so after the reunion that I, I'm sorry, about an hour or so after I watched the reunion yesterday morning, they actually dropped a red table talk where it was Will and a psychiatrist and the same psychiatrist was actually on scene when Janet and Will had their sit down. So I think I posted this on Instagram, Twitter, and the community tab on the channel, but I said that, hey, if you guys watch the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air special, then you need to watch the Red Table Talk because it really goes into more detail about the reunion. We hear from both Janet and Will. Now remember, Janet isn't at the Red Table, but there are additional clips from the special where, you know, they're both talking to the camera, you know, solo, and then there's more dialogue from when they were sitting down together. So before going further in the video, make sure you take a moment to hit that like button, hit subscribe, Click the bell and select all. That way you are notified whenever I post content to the channel. And finally, follow me on my social media platforms. Links are in the description below. Now, at the core of it, we pretty much learned that from Will's perspective, the world was against him. And there's some very deep dialogue in this uh, sit down with the psycho uh, psychologist where we learn about Will's childhood an abusive father. I want to be honest. I never knew that his father was abusive. I mean, from everything I've heard from Will, he learned a lot from his father. His father was in his life, but there was a lot of abuse going on. I was never aware of that. And he pretty much talked about how during that time he was a jokester. You know, he pretty much, you know, told jokes and did funny things because he felt like in order to keep his father for from abusing them, I'm guessing, you know, like physically and whatnot then to make sure he's in a good mood and laughing was a good way to do it. So he kind of took that energy into his teenage and adult years. So, you know, Fresh Prince started when he was about, what, 21, 22? So that was his thing. Like, all the care, all the cast on set will say the same thing, you know, full of energy. It was always a party when he was around, loud music and whatnot. Sometimes had, like, 20 guys from Philly with him, that kind of thing. So obviously that kind of demeanor wouldn't really fly when you have older people on set who are not for lack of a better phrase prof professionals in the business compared to a young a young upstart like him and you know apparently there were times where you know janet was saying yeah you know they told me to just stay in my room they you know i wouldn't laugh at your jokes and whatnot but then we learned come to find out that she had a lot going on in her own personal life from being pregnant and abusive um you know husband and dealing with a lot outside of the set of the Fresh Prince. However, she didn't know who to trust because being told, you know, like Will saw you as a problem or, you know, Will didn't like that you didn't laugh at his jokes, that kind of stuff. She was pretty much regulated to the sidelines. So she didn't know who to trust, who to open up to due to her work family. Tr I guess you could say kind of ousting her or outcasting her. But when she gets home, her own family doesn't treat her any better. So when she would go to set, she do her scenes and just go back to her room and whatnot. We really wouldn't speak to anybody. So that kind of vibe was like, you know, Will saying, you know, it was almost like she was a threat because of the fact that, you know, she wasn't, I guess you could say, one of the many people that surrounded him who loved the way he was in regards to that fun, you know, loving guy. But... The conversation goes further when we have, you know, those two pretty much learning this perspective from each other. They never knew like Will never knew what was going on at uh, Janet's, you know, home outside of work. And Janet never knew how Will saw her and everyone else as a threat. And it's just these kind of things that happen where. These kind of conversations, I mean, if they would have had this talk a while ago. It would have been easier to deal with than almost carrying it around for 30 years. So my perspective is it was one hell of a special. It really was. Um, I know that there's been black, bad blood between uh, Janet and a lot of the cast, not just Will. Of course, Alfonso, given the fact that he wasn't even at the portion of the special where Janet came on set and, you know, embraced everyone and 
her and uh, Daphne uh, met for the first time. Both Aunt Vivs in the same room at the same time. That was pretty cool. Now it's just a matter to kind of see, um, you know, where they move forward from here. But the thing is, and I think I mentioned this in my review of the special is, I know a lot of people are like, yeah, they need he needs to cut Aunt Viv a check or something like that. You know, they, they need to give her like Fresh Prince of Bel Air stuff. I'm like, you, well, you know, like I guess you could say residuals or something. I don't know if she isn't already getting those, at least from the couple of seasons that she was in. I think she was in the first three, two or three. I, you know, I don't really know what goes on with that. I mean, I know that at the core, you know, she was given a kind of a low ball offer when it was time to renew for the next season. And it was even lower than what she was actually getting at the time. And she pretty much turned it down. And then that was the beginning of basically the decline of her career. And, you know, her family disowned her. And pretty much that began all the hate mail and whatnot. It, you know, um... She did, you know, pretty much apologize for the slander and all that she threw Will's way. And then Will pretty much, you know, apologized for what, you know, he said. I believe there was that one radio interview where he mentioned that she was fired and whatnot. And she said, hey, nobody ever said I was fired. That was just you. And, you know, she talked about how words can hurt, words can kill, especially when it comes to labeling a black woman in the industry as difficult. Now, I'm glad the reconciliation happened. And let me just say this. I wasn't there. None of us were there. But, you know, I remember watching the special and I'm like, damn, you know, I felt bad for Will in the sense that he was in a position he was in, you know, then and there sitting next to a person that, you know, I can't even imagine what that would be like to sit next to someone and we're having a conversation, especially if it's our first one in almost 30 years and somebody's literally telling me I ruined their life. I ruined their career. It's like, how, how do you even cope with that? You know, especially when his whole thing is about, you know, peace, togetherness, self-fulfillment, you know, encouragement. And then you're sitting next to the person who, you know, you've done the, apparently you've done the opposite to them, which is, yeah, the opposite of what your whole brand, your whole message is. But, you know, I, I've seen some interesting comments on other YouTube videos and people discussing the reunion. I've even looked at some tweets. Like, overall, people are happy uh, these two were able to come together the way they did. It's just like, you know, is it really fair to kind of place most of, if not all, the blame on Will? I mean, the, the argument could be made because he was the star. You know, he was the, you know, the rapper, the star of the show. He had more pull and whatnot. I'm not going to say what he should have done, but you know, the are, you know, she did say, you know, she walked away from the deal. I mean, yeah, the disrespect of being lowballed, especially if it had to do with apparently being quote unquote difficult on set, you know, could have think, could things have been different? Not only if she had told, and I'm not saying you have to expose everything to those around you, especially those you work with. I mean, look at Chadwick Boseman, who outside of close family and friends nobody knew about his cancer but with aunt viv and what was going on in her personal life the question remains like if she had told people you know not to get pity or anything but to just understand that hey this is why i'm acting the way i am that possibly could have changed some things and how t in terms of how things played out not to mention you know all the vile things she said and done on social media and other interviews about Will and the cast, I mean, could she have not tried to reach out before? You know, it's like I was saying in my other video, there are a lot of conversations where not everything has to be out in public. Kind of like uh, the Monique and Tyler Perry thing where Tyler Perry gave her a phone call and was trying to set things right. But then Monique not only recorded the call, but then she leaked it online. And honestly, it didn't really do what she was intending for it to do. I remember it being kind of something that was just done in passing in regards to how the media treated it because its story came out. I remember people were sending me articles about it and it wasn't getting the traction that she thought it would get because if nothing else, even if Tyler had done wrong, which based on the full story of 
uh, Monique's situation with uh, Oprah, Lee Daniels, and Tyler Perry. And not to sound biased, considering this is a Tyler Perry themed channel, I don't really think Tyler did much of anything wrong against Monique. I mean, based on the three individuals, Daniels, Perry, and Winfrey, I would think Tyler would be at the lowest level of that totem pole because based on the quote unquote alleged role that he played, I don't really see where he did anything wrong. So for that person to try to be the peacemaker, you know, because I mean, Will was the one that reached out to Janet. It's one of those situations where um, not he was trying to squash this beef right then and there. But the thing about it is Monique is like, no, I want it done in public, you know, to admit that I did nothing wrong. I'm not difficult and whatnot to clear my name. And truth be told, Monique's actions were proven the opposite of what she was trying to communicate, which was she isn't difficult. But now with Janet, all the different things she said and done anytime there was a post, uh, you know, like whenever there 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 have been multiple Fresh Prince of L.A. reunions prior to the HBO Max special that have taken place over the years. And whenever um, those posts would circulate from like an Alfonso or a Will Smith or whoever, you know, Janet would be quick to, you know, black, put everybody on blast. So it's one of those things where. Has communication really been open between her and the other cast? It definitely doesn't seem that way. Um, I just think it's one of those things where it shouldn't have taken almost 30 years, but I'm glad it happened when it did. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Janet actually put out a tweet when the announcement for the reunion was, you know, first made that, hey, there's going to be a reunion soon. And I think she put up a tweet about it about how, you know, you need to set things right and this and that, and then Will reached out and then they met up. So it's one of those situations where even if you felt you hadn't done wrong and you were wronged, that doesn't mean that, you know, proving to be the opposite of what you're trying to portray your image to be, which is a non-difficult, not rude, and, well, a bitter, angry black woman, that isn't going to get your point across any better. If nothing else, is going to make people see you as the problem because to be honest you know this is our first time actually getting will's side of the story not just janet's side of the story and when we hear them both talk about their parts in the situation and whatnot it really does add more depth to it you know so i really am glad they were able to reconcile but just you know speaking for the average everyday person you know sometimes it isn't the other person. Sometimes it's you. Sometimes you are the person standing in your own way. You know, like, again, I don't know what Janet's full situation was after the Fresh print. She went into details about it. But, you know, I guess based off what was happening, the phones were, you know, not ringing and whatnot, you know, because based on and I hate to do this because I will be doing a Monique video separate from this one. But when you look at how Monique tried to twist this story to reflect the Tyler and Monique situation, there's a big difference because it definitely seems like Janet is a living embodiment of someone who is blackballed in the industry versus Monique, who has had roles since Precious, since this whole drama went down. What was it? Almost Christmas. She has her own. What is it? The residency at Las Vegas and whatnot and a couple other things going on. But a couple problems with that. We don't really hear about that as much as her beast with all these people. Anytime she's in the public eye. It's because of Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels, Oprah Winfrey. That's horrible because of the fact that you're allowing that to overshadow the things you're working on because I'm a Monique fan. I love the Parkers. I loved her BET talk show. She was my favorite, favorite actor in Almost Christmas. Her role was just hilarious, but we don't really see that moment. I think there was an interview maybe last year or a year and a half ago. It was on the Ricky Smiley radio show. And it was Monique, her husband, not on the phone. Her husband, not in the uh, interview. That was probably the best of Monique I've seen in a while. I'm like, this is the Monique I love to see. Comedic, thoughtful, dropping some truth bombs. Not shade, but truth bombs about the industry and in terms of how she came up in it and, you know, about what her next moves are going to be. But no, I feel like as time goes on, she's going to be more known as this bitter person who wanted people to boycott Netflix and, you know, blasting 
a lot of people's favorite people in the industry, Elite Daniels, Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey. So when it looks at the Janet situation, I don't know what the hell went on between her and Alfonso. Like I am aware of that one clip of Alfonso doing like stand up and he goes in on Janet. A lot of people were saying, you know, he he started it first before she did. I do not know. I know they've both said and done things against the other. I don't know the timeline, though. But whatever happened, obviously, hasn't been resolved, given that when Janet came to the set, Alfonso, I believe, was the only person MIA. So there's that aspect of it. But I, I really feel that if you have not done so, Look, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion, I've seen it on like multiple YouTube channels. Some have had it pulled down due to copyright and then other people re-upload it. So if you don't have HBO Max, it's on here somewhere. Just type in the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion. But, you know, if you have HBO Max, go ahead and watch it. And the Red Table Talk, it's on the, it's on the Red Table Talk Facebook page. So I'd suggest watching the reunion first, then watch the Red Table and who's to say there won't be a red table between Janet and Will? I don't know. To be honest, their reconciliation right then and there was good enough for me. I mean, as a person who grew up watching the series, it's just one of those things where I think at the end of the uh, red table talk, Will looked at Cam like, hey, Jan, I want to text you after, uh, you know, the meeting. So uh, after the talk. And like I said, not everything has to be done in the public eye. Not everything has to be done like these two have probably had multiple conversations since the re after, uh, since their sit down. Who's to say there aren't future projects that Will will put her in? I mean, I believe that a lot of people have been commenting, say, hey, Jeremy, um, yes, they are doing a drop they're doing like a fresh prince reboot that's going to be more like a drama a lot of people are you know hey have her and uh the reboot like as aunt div or something like that who, who who's to say what they're going to do i just hope that you know janet is giving more opportunities now um that the air has been cleared i hope that this allows for not just career opportunities and money opportunity all that nonsense i think at the end of the day if there's some peace in the soul that means more than any check that's, you know, just my thought process on it. But then again, I've never been part of the business. I've never been in Hollywood. I know everybody needs money to survive, but um, I'm just glad that that weight has been lifted off their shoulders. So I just my, my favorite moment had to be towards the end of their conversation where Will's like, you know, I couldn't do a 30th anniversary special without you being involved to celebrate you and what you contributed to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And then when she extended her arms for a hug and then they embraced and he's like, you know what? You're my little boy. I'm always going to be your auntie. That to me was amazing. I mean, in that moment, trust him, Lee, there are a lot of times people in our lives or people we've interacted with, they've done us wrong. So, sometimes they, some pe words can hurt. I mean, yeah, Will saying she's difficult, but a lot of people say can say some damn thing. I mean, I'm 29 and there have been family members that said, quote unquote, jokes or whatever. When I was a kid, that still scar me today. So, yeah, I mean, after all the things that were been said from both. Um, well, Janet's side, I guess you could say it is going to take a lot to kind of uh, move past that with other individuals. But between her and Will, I'm glad that beef was squashed. And when I say other individuals, more more so Alfonso. Like, I don't know what's going on with that. But like I said, I'm just glad that this reunion happened. I really do wish they could have reconciled. This this situation could have occurred before James passed away. Like, I, I really was curious. Like, I wonder what Janet's relationship was with James off camera, you know? I mean, James Avery was said to be the glue that held everything together. So I wonder what his response was, you know. I mean, he wasn't a hip-hop big star like Will Smith, obviously. But at the same time, you know, it seemed like James Avery commanded, you know, the stage when he stepped on there. Not disrespectful, but, you know, just his presence and professionalism. Like, I wonder what was his attitude towards it. But I guess based off what we learned from Janet, it's like the fact that, she was being, you know, portrayed as unprofessional because she would just come to set, not really talk to anyone. Pretty much she clocked in, did what she had to do, and she clocked out. So I guess that kind of gave a cold shoulder to everyone around her. And that's probably why when the time came for the contract renegotiations and whatnot, you know, nobody kind of came up to bat for her due to that. And not only that, you know, 
Will Smith was Will Smith. Like he said, he was 21. And I like how he addressed that. Hence why, again, watch the red table because the psychology said that was the right move because I think Will broke it down. Like, you know, love, L-U-V, listen, understand, and validate what you agree on. And that's exactly what he did. I mean, I love how Will speaks. Obviously, a lot of Obama-isms, like he chooses carefully what he, he's going to say, but it's, it's it makes it easier to follow him because he could have easily made it about himself in terms of, well, yeah, I had it rough too and this and that. And pretty much it would have been two people clashing ideals. But he listened because he learned something he didn't know. And then vice versa when he said, I felt the world was against me. So um, I, do, I don't mean to be talking in circles here, but it's like I'm glad things were worked out. Like I said, I don't know if placing everything on Will was the right thing. But I'm glad they were able to make up. You know, like I said, I'm pretty sure that the conversations are still being had between the two. Some kind of, uh, you know, maybe an arrangement to give her opportunities because it's Will Smith. You know, he's Will Smith. But regardless, you know, 2020, for as bad as it is, there are sometimes nuggets of miracles to be found. And this was one of them. This was one of them. So uh, with that being said, let me know your thoughts on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion special on the Will Smith Red Table Talk. Do you think Will will do another one with Janet? Who's to say? Maybe they'll follow up a few months from now and just say, hey, everything's good. But I feel like not only was the reconciliation good for the two of them, but also all the fans as well. You know, people who grew up watching the show and also the lesson of hey, you know what, bitterness and whatnot isn't good for anybody. Like if there's somebody you need to call, someone you've wronged or somebody who maybe they wronged you and you just kind of cut yourselves off from them, maybe give them a call, maybe explain your side of the story and then they'll, yo, I didn't know I hurt you that bad and then you can make peace. But yeah, just because you make peace doesn't mean you will go back to sitting at the same table breaking bread. It's like, you know, you want to see them meet, they'll just be at another table. Like, you can make peace. That doesn't mean things are going to be the same again, though. But either way, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section below. Shout out to the patrons over on Patreon. You can join in for as little as $1 a month. Or if you want to just donate to the channel directly, feel free to do so on PayPal or Cash App. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you soon.